Good afternoon. I'm Professor Catherine Tan, Director of the Graduate School. Thank you for coming to this information center, seminar for admission to MPhil and PhD programs at the Xi'an University. Uh, the agenda for today is that I'll first introduce the research postgraduate programs at Xi'an University, and then it will be followed by specific consultation programs with the staff and faculty from the arts and humanities departments. Each, star, each professor of these three departments from Chinese language and literature, from English language and literature, and from history department will explain about their uh, research postgraduate, MQ and PhD programs. After each faculty's explains about the programs, they we will, we will answer one or two questions, particularly to their programs. After the three um, sessions by the three faculties, then there will be a sharing of from the current students. They will share the learning experience at the Xi'an University. And the student will also welcome some questions from you. And after that, I'll do an overall summary and to answer some of the questions that you might still have. So without any further delay, let me go to the general information. Before I do that, I'll explain about the graduate school at Xi'an University. Currently, there are two big groups of research of graduate programs at Xi'an. One group is called the taught program, taught master programs or doctor programs. Um, this is these top programs are course web based or skill based and that's not my my introduction for today okay those top programs usually lead to a master degree ma degree in a specific faculty mostly related to the industry or applied you know knowledge applied practice today i'm focusing on the research postgraduate programs which we call mphil and phd programs and we have a total of 12 research postgraduate programs in six different departments. And in each department, there will be both MPhil and PhD programs offered in the Chinese language and literature department, and English department and history department from the Faculty of Arts. And from the Faculty of Commerce, we do have the MPhil and PhD research postgraduate program in economics. And then from the Faculty of Social Science, we will have MPhil and PhD degree in, offered by the Department of Counseling and Psychology. And then we also have MPhil and PhD programs offered by the Sociology Department. The com there are common features of all these research postgraduate programs that I will I'll talk about specific features. I'll let the faculties talk about it. For the common features for all MPhil students, MPhil research postgraduate programs, the study period, we call the normative study period. That means the period that you expected and most students will graduate. For full-time mode is 24 months, two years. And the maximum period Hopefully, we will not be reaching the maximum period. Most people will graduate in 24 months, full-time and few. And then if you're taking a part-time, it'll be the normative period is 48 months. And the maximum period is a little bit longer than the full-time. For PhD programs, there are two types of students entering in the PhD programs. First type is those who already have a master. MPhil or top master programs. They already have a second degree, okay? That means the master degree. So the full-time normative period is 36 months, three years, and part-time is four, four years. There are another group of students who might be entering the PhD student. These are the very good top students. They enter directly after the bachelor degree without getting a second degree. So those who are entering with 
out MCU or top master program. That means they're entering straight from the um, bachelor degree. And for some of you, might be you're in the fourth year, and you might be thinking about you're very committed, very sure that you want to go into research program. You can still consider. So we also admit students directly from the bachelor's degree. So the full time will be four years. So instead of three years for master, those entering with a master, then you'll be graduating in four years. Four four years. Part time is sixty months. The next thing, common features of all these programs. Despite Xi'an University is a private university, we do not receive government funding, but we manage to have, you know, uh, secure very generous donations and sponsorship from various industries and various donors. So it's very similar to those that are studying uh, MPhil or PhD, PhD programs at the government funded universities. For students entering full time mode, into either the MPhil or PhD program, they will receive $1,500 per month during the normative study period. Okay, so for example, if you're entering, uh, going for an MPhil student and you have admitted, you'll be supported every month with $50,000 for two years during your normative period. For PhD entering with a master, the normative period is three years, so you'll be supported every month with $1,500. And on top of that, we also provide special subsidies. And right now, the free, you will be provided with free accommodation to the postgraduate hostel for the first semester for full-time students. So this is only for full-time students. And some of the students might also apply for additional support of $5,000 for the first year, and then a little less for the, the second year onward. But since most of you are final year students, because this session is particularly, uh, we invited final years from Xuyan. So most of the special features Xuyan, you probably know. So I don't you know, need to explain too much our you know, gorgeous campus here at Bremen Hill. Okay, and of course, I don't need to mention something about application fees. So it's a $200 per, per program, regardless whether you are successful or not. The next thing that people are interested to know is the tuition. So for each year, for a full time student within the normative period, it's 69,000 per year part-time is 46,000 per year, and it's paid installment for the, during your normative period. So it's two years of full-time MPhil and um, three years for PhD with a master and four years without a master for PhD program. So this is the tuition fee that you have to pay. And then for some reason, sometimes you can't finish, for example, most of the time, for example, most of the time, you would take a little bit longer to finish your dissertation or your thesis or your research project. And usually most people, most people completed their coursework and other requirements you know, ahead of time. And what takes time is a research project and your thesis or your dissertation. So it's okay. And we understand that usually you finish all the coursework, it's just a little bit left to need to be continued for three or four months longer. So after the normative period, you're charged much less. So it's a 4,000 per three month period. Okay, although it's charged less, but we are all encourage you to graduate on time. Okay. And the program features. So in summary, the special features of our program is it makes small. That means it's some it includes some coursework as well as some um, as well as research. For some research program, it's entirely 
you know, research without any coursework. And for the top master, they mostly taught, taught courses. Okay, but for this particular MPU and PhD program, we adopt a fixed mode, the combination of coursework and the research thesis. And the coursework include both the core courses from the university. That means regardless of which department you're from, you have to attend all these university courses. And some courses from your own department. And our features are very unique feature of the postgraduate research program at Shia is multi is interdisciplinary. That means that we do not we expect the research students not only knowledgeable in their own area, but also have very good command of knowledge of other related disciplines. So for example, if you're from history department, in a program, research program, we do expect your research projects or some of the coursework to include other knowledge from other disciplines like Chinese language or even from economics. So this is our unique features because we want you to be a more well-rounded scientist or researcher rather than someone who is very, very only focused on one aspect of the department, okay? So that's the common features of regardless which department you're from. And the curriculum, okay, in more detail, the common call in courses, that means regardless of which program you're in, which department you're in, you have to take GIS 101. It's advanced research methodology. Don't be scared by the word advanced, okay? <laughs> because in this course, it includes various methodology from different disciplines. So it won't be that advanced, okay? The advanced stuff mainly you will pick up from your own department. So for example, in some of the departments from us and humanity, they mostly focus on qualitative research and they, they are less knowledgeable or less used of quantitative surveys and other things, and now they spectators. So in this course, we'll teach you both interview qualitative research methodology as well as quantitative numbers, working numbers. And although the work is called advanced, but it's because you are studying a research methodology from other departments, other disciplines. So it would not be as advanced as you, the name suggested. So it will give you an introduction of what social scientists do in the survey, in analysis of big data. And we also tell the social science students how to you know, do qualitative study in terms of focus group, how to analyze focus group discussion, how to do case analysis, things like that. So that's common courses for all students. The second one is GLS 102 interdisciplinary approach. In the second course, common course, you have to we provide six, four to six short courses. Last, last for about four weeks each on different disciplines that offer the, the graduate programs, the research graduate programs. And the student can choose three out of what we offer. So on top, for example, a student from the Department of Sociology so that's will be, he, he, he probably prefer to choose the four week short, short module on sociology, but he, he or she has to choose two other short modules from either the Chinese department or the history department or the economics department. So it's a four weeks and usually those are topics are quite interesting. And if you're interested, you look at our website and about our, 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 our handbooks and they will list out the, the, uh, the past short courses that we have offered. And then also on all the students on top of attending these two core courses, they will attend a, what we call a graduate seminars. Graduate seminars are one hour seminars offered by different departments and, di and sometimes a university teaching and learning center. So these are you are a rather, you know, if you go to a seminar, it's just a one hour law and no test, no quiz, okay? So, and you have to attend a certain percentage during your study. The first year we expect to attend more and the second year, because you have to do data collection, do research, 
and do your proposal, then you expect to take less. So the, the detailed requirement is also listed in the handbook. And on top of that, you have to, for every year, you have to att attend or participate in a research seminar. These research seminars will be offered, presented by either the faculty from Xi'an University, from various research centers, from various departments, or invited speakers from outside the university. And again, it's a participation. So you go to a research seminar where a, a speaker will present the findings and explain what they're doing, explain what's coming, what, what, what is the limitation of the research and what are the plans thing, and, and the expected you know, development in that field. Of course, we also welcome our graduate student to present a research seminar. Okay, so, so, this, so each student will only require to attend one during each year. So uh, other than the common core, there will be department courses. And each, usually each department where you are from, for example, if you are from a student of history, then there will be a core course from history department that you have to take. Usually this is taken during the second semester of your first year of program. And the GRS 101 is taken during the first semester. Okay, so when you enroll in the program, the first semester, you take the GRS 101. The second semester, you take GRS 102, plus, or you prefer to take the department seminars the second year, first semester. So this is the plan. I do have a plan for your study later on. So this is how it goes. Of course, for research postgraduate program, one of the key elements is you conduct a research, you present a research idea with just discuss with your supervisor, and then conduct the research, be it data collection or interview or whatever. And then after the data collection, then you write the analyze, and then you write up and you present it, and then you are orally being examined. Okay, so the thesis is a very important part of your study. So people usually do plan ahead, and that's why when we ask students to submit the application, we need to we need them to think about what they are going to do in the next three or four years. Okay, and they need to discuss with the potential supervisor early on. Now, with a little bit more detail at Enfield, which I talked about early on, earlier. So basically, it's a research methodology into disciplinary GRS 102 and the department courses and seminars, research seminars, and graduate seminars. NCD means non credit bearing. Okay, so it is required, but it will not, you will not get a grade. So you won't get A, B, C, D, or you will not be examined. We just need your participation, okay? So it's a non-credit bearing. And for every student, you need to, when you have right decided on a research project, agree upon and endorsed by your supervisor, we need you to orally defend your thesis idea and then be examined and evaluated whether this research proposal is innovative and is original. And after the, uh, the successful defense, oral defense, then you collect data. After that, you still need to present your findings in a group of examiners and being orally examined. That's an MPhil program, and there's a study chart. So it's not that complicated. I have explained it earlier. So you come to the program, first year you take care of most of the coursework and start and present your thesis. And the second year is mostly you take care of other, re other requirements like a departmental core courses and then collect data and then to present it and then to defend it. So it's a two year plan. Okay, each year you go to a, some graduate seminars and one research seminar, all right? So for PhD program, now do remember, so the, basically the structure is the same with the exception that PhD they re students, they require two, two other things, okay? Two workshops, one colloquial. That means after 
if okay, the cost was the same. Okay, after you 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 discuss and endorse research, your research ideas endorsed by your supervisor, you write it up the proposal, def orally defend it, evaluate it. If it's okay, then you go ahead. And in the middle, okay. So because your, 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 your thesis is expected to be a little bit more comprehensive, a little bit more complicated, the requirements is more than just an end field. So we need to monitor your, 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 your continuous you know, assessment of your thesis. So you need, before you write it, analyze everything, present the final results, you have to do two workshops. That means you have to, I forgot what's the workshop, present some of your, your ideas, okay? And one colloquial is that you have to take one chapter out of your final defense, final dissertation and present it, okay? So the two things, two workshops and one colloquial is to help us help you and your supervisor and the committee that evaluate you to monitor your continuous you know, study, you know, the progress of your thesis. And okay, if everything is well, then you do a final oral defense of thesis and you will have ex external examiners evaluated as well as your supervisor and some internal examiners. So these are the same regardless of whether you're entering with a master's degree, entering the PhD program with a master or without a master's degree. All right, so this is the study plan. So for three years, three years for people entering with a master's degree and four years for people with entering without a master's degree. Okay, so the next thing I talk about is also for general application, the mission requirement. Uh, MPhil and PhD pretty much the same. Okay. First of all, for MPhil, for grad, you have to be graduated from a recognized university. We are expected to have, you know, at least a second class honor or a B average. But if a PhD, those who are entering with MPhil or top master degree and all those top students, very good students, very motivated students who just graduated with a bachelor or fine, even if you are final year now, you can still think about PhD if you can show your motivation with a good academic performance and endorsed by your supervisor. So I do supervise quite a number of students who are just fresh grad, undergraduate, bachelor. They don't even, they're just like some of you who are in the final semester of your their undergraduate. So they, they're so motivated, they know what they are doing, they do work with the supervisor and the supervisor is more than happy to continue working with the student in terms of pursuing further studies. So it's not impossible, okay? So, but I would say that what about if I don't have all this qualification? So, I, I, so don't be discouraged also because other than that, we also consider other things. Later on, I'll tell you. So we need you to submit not just your grades from your previous work, but we also need you to submit um, some research ideas, a research paper. And we also, each department will also interview you or the applicants to, to explore you know, how well their thinking are, how put together the research ideas, and how motivated are. They are. So even though, you know, sometimes in, in university, especially during the back undergraduate, we, we tend to be doing some, a lot of other things, okay? And we, we call it the late developer, okay? And after the four years, we decide, oh, I, I should not have spent my university years in, 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 a, in those ways. And I'm now putting together all my studs, I'm putting together all my eggs, and then I want to really commit to it. So if you could persuade the interview panel that you indeed are settling down and your four years of undergraduate coursework results of GPA so-called do not really reflect your potential. So that is something that you need to convince the interview with the department. So we do admit students that fall outside this requirement, but this 
is the onus of responsibility is is for the applicant to show that be, beyond this requirement they do have something more to offer okay and of course the english requirement is very necessary regardless of where you go you need to have an english test nowadays is islet academic equal or less no less than 6.5 okay this is something that for some students um, you might need preparation before you, 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 you go to take this test because it's quite expensive. And so and you need this result when you apply, okay? Or uh, even if the results are ready, we, could, we, we want to accept you, but we cannot. All we can do is to give you a conditional offer. When your results, the test with English test result come and it does not fulfill this criteria, we, can, we still cannot admit you. So this is a rule that cannot be bent. Okay, so do remember that. So you do need a either test result greater or less than 6.5. Uh, no, break it or greater than 6.5. This is something that is very important. Okay, even if your first class honor, if your either result is 6.0 or 5.5, we still cannot accept you. Okay. And there are some exceptions. The only exceptions is very factual, okay? It's either you graduate from an English speaking country, okay? You graduate your undergraduate degree with the, at the English speaking country. Like for example, you pick up your undergraduate degree in Australia. You study at Australia and get your bachelor's degree. Then you're exempted from this island test. And if you are a student of English speaking, department in the local university, for example, at Xi'an, you're also exempted, okay? And if you're taking the added test, it must be within the recent two or three years. I had one applicant that asked us, I take the island equivalent in 2002, would it be okay? Of course, no, <laughs> it's within two or three years, okay? So this is very important because this is something that uh, we, a rule that we cannot bend, all right? Then the next question, how to apply? Okay, nowadays technology, you can go straight to apply online, this is the link, or you do the paper application. And the first round of mission is the end of February. Okay, we do have a quota. So for this quota is set by, by the Government Education Bureau. So we cannot accept students, it's similar to any other university. You cannot um, exceed beyond as given to you as the mission quota, even if you are private university. So it's the same old wise saying, early bird catches the worm, okay? If the first round we admit enough students, good enough students, then we may not have the second round. And if we find that there's still vacancy for some times, we're not quite sure whether, you know, top students, good students are welcome everywhere, okay? They do have choices. So sometimes we offer to students and they have decided on other offers, then we might have vacancy for second round. But that's not guaranteed there will be a second round. And some in the past years, I think last year we had a third round, but this is very exceptional because you know last year there are a lot of things happening, okay, the social unrest and the you know the things like that. So and the pandemic started to, to, to spread. So people are very hesitant to commit themselves to two or three other years. Okay. So but do remember the deadline as of now is February the 28th. There's no guarantee there's a second round, all right? So, and application material is very, very important. It reflects your sense of responsibility and also reflects your, your way of doing things, how serious you are, how self-conscious you are. We have applications doing very sloppily. Okay, a lot of information not filled out. And in the past, handwriting is totally unreadable. Okay, and a lot of things missing. 
So we are not in a position to chase around documents that are required for consideration. So if you're really, really thinking about you know, studying a research program, and it also reflects how you would be like being a researcher, being a scientist in the coming years. Because as a scientist, as a researcher, the public gives a lot of trust in what we collect data and how we analyze data and how we interpret the data. So your application materials reflect who you are and how serious you are and how responsible you are. So first of all, we do need you a copy of identity or passport from you, an official transcript from the university that you graduated, copies of degree certificates. The two things are different. Degree certificate is just a piece of paper with a job and <laughs> with the name of the university and then your the degree, okay, bachelor degree in psychology. But this certificate is a piece of paper and sometimes it's easy to make a fake one. Okay, so we do need, uh, so other than just a degree certificate and we also need to know a little bit more about you what you are coming from, what you have learned so far, and what is the performance. So the official transcript is the one that tells, that has what courses to take on each year, which semester, and the grade, how many credit hours, and the grade you got A or B or C. So it's very detailed, and your GPA in every semester and the overall GPA. But this can also be fake. <laughs> Nowadays, everything can be you know, fake. So we do need you to ask the university that you graduate to send us an official transcript, okay, directly from the university to Xi'an University. And nowadays, because with the lockdown from some university, some, some places, for example, if you're graduate from UK, okay, and if you ask them to send the transcript to us, okay, responding to you is definitely not their first priority. <laughs> So it might take them a long time. Okay, so so you do the best you can. Write to the you know ask the you know the university to provide an official copy to send to us. But at the same time, I do advise you to also take the copies of the transcript. Okay, I, I believe most of us will still keep the copies of the transcript, and then certify at the local where the the the, the there's the places where you can certify in Hong Kong, the, the, the government, you know, whatever, yeah, yeah. Office of Home Affairs, that you certify this is a true copy. And that you submit it together with your application, but it does not replace the real official one, okay? You still have to ask your university to send to us directly. And of course, if you're student from Xi'an, it's easier. Okay, you just, just ask the registry to send a copy to next door. That means us, okay. So there is official transcript, a sample of writing. Okay, this is what I talk about. Okay, if you have a term paper, but still, if you're for your undergraduate degree, you do need a thesis, send a copy of your thesis. And together with a research proposal, what you will be doing in the next two or three years during your research postgraduate program. And this research proposal, you know, a lot of people say, I don't know what I would do. I might change my mind. What happened? I don't want to, you know, being stuck in this idea. I want to explore more beyond. After I come to study, I might have better ideas. Don't worry. The research proposal is a sample of what you will be doing. So you will be not bound by this absolute idea. So you, sometimes, and most of the time, student comes here, they'll do more. After they enter the program, they modify the research ideas. They might even change the supervisor. They might even change the topic. It's allowed. But this research proposal shows us that you need to this. You have an initial discussion with your supervisor, potential supervisor. You have an initial idea what you're going to do. Okay, the areas. All right. And the last but not the least important is the confidential recommendation from two. Uh, this is very important in next work. Academic referee. Academic, that means someone who is in a position to give comment on your academic performance. So 
It cannot be from your mother or father. He's a good boy, very compliant. I do see that. And from your neighbor, from your girlfriend, from your kid, if you have been working, from your previous supervisor. Okay. Well, they, they can testify some aspect of you, but we need people who know how well you would be performing in academic setting. So the best academic referee is either your previous supervisor to know you or the course instructor who have you know, remember who remember you and to give you a objective opinion. Now this recommendation letter need to be confidential, need to be sent directly. The referee should be sent directly to Shilia. It's not sending to you. It's no good even if sealed and signed, but sent directly as a referee to send directly to us, to the Sweden University. So this is what it's about. So the procedure is like this. Prepare the material, take some time. So that's why we hold this information seminar a month before the deadline. Submit your application and you, this is a, is a rough estimation of the time frame. okay? Don't call us, you know, you March this, because it takes time to process application, to verify your documents, and you will and then pass on to the department that you want to, you know, uh, enroll in. So you will receive an interview invitation if your application is being considered around April and May. It will be conducted with the department that you intend to uh, enroll, if not conducted by the graduate school. Okay, so we wait for the department to call you. And then application results probably we want to do it as early as possible because people we need to plan ahead because particularly financially we want to prepare the tuition because you have to pay before you receive your student allowance already so so this is the approximate time frame okay special facility okay that is i assume because this seminar is for three and final year students you know most of the features okay of Xi'an University campus. One thing I want to highlight is the postgraduate student office. Each postgraduate student will have an office, a working station in a very, very big room, spacious room. It's facing this way. Okay. Perhaps our current student will share with you. So where you can meet because with your studentship, you're not just receiving money doing nothing. Okay, you're required to do with the studentship, you're required to do eight hours, average eight hours per week of work. What type of work you'll be asked to expected to do is mostly TA, teaching assistant. Okay, because how you know a teaching experience is very important because as a researcher, you need not you, you are not just hiding in a room in a lab doing things and doing things that only you know and you and your supervisor know. Okay, teaching. Uh, assistant, not just teaching, okay, it, it kind of train you to express your idea, to explain a concept to people that don't know the concept, okay, so it's a good training, and also some students, some, the students may need you to do some research work, either for the department or for the supervisor, so you still need, you need to do eight hours of work for the studentship you receive. And uh, not to mention the postgraduate dorm. It's a single room, okay? And with you know, all the facilities and facing the harbor. If you go outside and rent a room like this, it's probably about eight, seven or $8,000, okay? So it's a very spacious room. So if you need to contact us, if you're still not clear, email website, and there's a very beautiful, elegant graduate for shoe online. Okay, so it's a flip book online, so it's very easy to read. Summarize most of the important things and names of the potential supervisors. And without further ado, I think I run run over time. Okay, and may, may I invite the faculty from the Department of Chinese, Dr. Wall, to talk about the specific program. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Wall.
咁我呢度有啲基本嘅誒入學條件誒語言要求，咁我就跳過去唔講啦。咁我直接咧就係講一啲就係我哋關於學系上面嘅誒問題。咁啊，我哋由下邊開始講起先啦，就係如果係入讀中文系，咁當然頭先阿鄧教授講好清楚啦，英文就係國際史啊，又要六點五。咁啊，另外中文咧，誒中文係當然一定要有。誒寫作能力誒同埋誒閱讀能力都要相當高嘅，咁啊呢個係一個基本嘅要求啦。因為誒我哋嘅論文係用中文寫作嘅，咁所以誒可能有啲外國嘅朋友想考中文系咧，可能就會有啲困難啦。咁啊呢個係中文要求啦。咁啊另外咧，我就想講下一點啦，就係點解我哋要讀樹人中文系嘅研究生課程？咁啊，呢一樣嘢誒，首先一點咧就係，如果係誒本校畢業生，咁呢個就係最理想嘅，因為你個環境你已經有四年啦。咁另外就係你對於老師非常之熟悉啦。咁啊，你唔會有陌生啦，因為一般去到一一所新嘅大學咧，你起碼要有個半年一年時間去熟習嘅熟習環境。咁啊，呢度就係你唔需要有任何嘅。誒一種恐懼感啦、陌生感，咁啊呢個係第一點啦。咁啊第二點頭先鄧教授都講咗啦，就係、是、我哋係有獎學金嘅。咁啊呢個獎學金，我覺得就誒其實都吸引啦。啊，咁啊呢個係第二點啦。咁啊第三點，咁我覺得呢一點都相當重要嘅，就係、是、因為我哋呢個學位一個認可學位啦。咁啊最近我哋誒公布嘅呢個大學排名喺亞洲係入咗三百強。咁啊，所以你讀呢個學位，你讀完之後，你可以去其他國家、其他地方去銜接，繼續讀。誒、呃，如果你收讀碩士，咁你可以繼續讀博士啦。或者你讀完博士，你可以申請誒、呃、職位，或者係繼續繼續誒、呃、讀 postdoc， 呢個都可以嘅。我覺得誒呢、呃、一點咧，就係、是、我哋嘅一個優勢啦。咁啊，跟住呢就係第四。咁我係覺得比較誒、呃、欣賞，就係、是、我哋呢一個呢、这個課程嘅。咁我哋係強調跨學科研究。咁啊，頭先鄧教授講到就係必修嘅一零一、一零二啦，嗰兩科其實我覺得就係、是、誒、呃，譬如你研究誒、呃、中國文學。咁啊，我哋而家呢就要求係一種就係、是、採取一種跨學科嘅方法。咁啊，我覺得誒會睇到好多好多新嘅觀點嘅。咁啊，呢種方法咧就係其實係而家個世界嘅潮流啦。咁啊，我哋誒以往就係將啲學科咧分成一片一片。咁啊，每一個學科其實就係好似一個披薩裏邊嘅一塊。咁所以冇人攞住嗰塊披薩，但係唔記得咗其實係一個完整嘅披薩。咁所以誒呢、呃这個跨學科研究呢，其實就喺哲學上面講呢，就係、是、將佢歸一，其實係一個圓形嚟嘅，唔係一個一塊。咁我覺得呢一個問題誒係、呃、一個好處嚟，係一個優勢。就係、是、當你誒、呃、掌握誒、呃、一個超過一個領域嘅知識呢，往往你嘅眼界會闊大咗嘅。咁你睇嘢呢，可能有有啲唔同嘅結論。我覺得呢個係一個非常之好嘅優勢。咁啊，另外呢，就我哋中文系啦，我講我哋中文系，我哋我嘅經驗啦，就係、是、研究生入咗嚟之後呢，就有好多機會鍛鍊嘅。咁啊，可以誒、呃、做導師嘅助教啦，可以幫佢做研究啦。另外你可以參與學系嘅各種嘅行政工作啦。咁呢種係一種歷練嚟嘅，我覺得就係、是、對一個人培訓咧。誒，唔單止係我哋學術上啦，咁另外就係你誒要熟悉一啲其他嘢，譬如教學啊、誒研究啊，以至就係一啲一般嘅行政工作。咁我覺得對你將來誒就業啦，啊，咁我覺得都係一個好大嘅幫助嘅。咁啊，呢個第五點嚇。好啦，咁啊，我哋講呢一點啦，我就。呢、这個係個 tips 嚟嘅，咁我俾啲 tips 大家嚇，就係、是呃、根據我自己嘅經驗咧，就係、是、呢
兩三年面試嚇，就係、是、見到啲學生誒、呃、寫個個 proposal 誒、呃、statement 咁啊上嚟，咁一般會發現啲咩咩問題咧？就係、是、我哋對啲咩問題比較感興趣嘅咧？就係、是、你一般你有一個題目，呢、这個題目一定係誒、呃、合理嘅。而且你要有一個比較完整嘅論證，唔好有啲特別大嘅錯誤。一般咧就係面試，如果係誒比較完整嘅，我哋問嘅問題就會比較少啦。但係呢個 proposal 裏邊有好多就係學術嘅問題，咁通常咧啲老師就好感興趣，點解你咁樣睇嘅咧？你啲材料材料係點解釋嘅咧？問得好好細嘅。咁所以咧，我我建議咧就係、是，誒、呃、你有一個誒諗、呃、法，對呢個題目，當然呢個題目一定要你非常之熟悉嘅，就唔好誒寫一啲你你唔熟悉嘅嘢，因為你唔熟悉嘅嘢，你喺個短時間裏邊好難做一個完整嘅準備嘅，就係、是、你自己熟悉，做一個簡單嘅文獻回顧，然後你嘅觀點做一個比較詳細嘅論證，有個結論。咁呢個就係一個比較好嘅一個 proposal 啦。咁啊，一般我哋問問題都係圍繞住兩樣嘢。第一就係你嗰個 proposal， 第二就係你嗰個學歷。譬如你有冇發過文章啊？或者你誒專門誒研究邊一個領域㗎？咁我哋就會問你一啲基本嘅呢啲問題。譬如話你想研究唐詩，咁我哋可能就會問你啦。咁唐詩你中意邊啲作者啊？你讀過啲咩詩啊？可唔可以講下邊個作者嘅特色啊？等等呢啲嘢啊。咁啊，所以誒、呃，你哋申請誒、呃、讀研究生嘅時候，要要關注呢啲問題啦。咁啊，呢個係我講嘅一啲 tips 啊，俾大家。好啦，咁我講下就係中文系裏邊嘅一啲師資嘅問題啦。咁啊，我哋強項就係古典文學。咁啊，我哋誒、呃、學校裏邊，我哋系裏邊有五位。正教授嘅，咁啊，其中三位正教授係研究古代文學嘅，相當強。咁啊，另外一位教授咧就係研究語言學嘅。咁啊，我介紹第一位教授咧，就係因為我哋誒採取係一種師徒制嘅，就係、是、一般就係你考研究生，同個導師本身係嗰個研究領域要吻合先得，係係佢研究興趣，係咪啊？佢佢會指導你。咁啊，所以你就跟佢學習。誒、uh, ，我哋第一位老師就係楊若薇教授啦。咁啊，佢係一個語言學家嚟嘅，誒、uh, 非常之廣博知識。咁啊，佢、uh, 誒一般人唔知道係佢除咗係一個語言學家之外，佢係一個歷史學家嚟嘅。佢係研究宋同埋金嘅歷史嘅。啊、uh, 誒、uh, ，我聽佢講好似有一本著作佢就快出版，啊非常之犀利嘅。啊，佢係一個跨領域嘅啊，語言學應用語言學。跟住歷史學，咁啊，我就喺呢度列咗佢嗰啲誒專業範圍咧，佢嘅研究範圍啦。咁啊，另外我哋、呃、古典小説方面咧，有個專家就係、是、傅成洲教授。咁啊，傅教授咧，佢係、呃、以研究三言兩拍出名嘅。咁啊，佢對於一啲長篇小説咧，亦有相當見解。咁啊～誒有啲有啲觀點亦受到學術界嘅嘅認可嘅，啊咁啊，如果你哋有興趣研究古典小説嘅咧，啊可以報考傅成洲教授嘅研究生。咁啊，除此之外咧，佢就亦收一啲宋元啊宋元明清文學嘅博士生嘅、碩士生嘅。咁啊，第三位教授咧就係陳允峯教授啦。咁啊，陳教授咧佢誒除咗係誒研究唐代文學之外，咁佢係一個文論專家嚟嘅，咁尤其是佢係誒專於文心雕龍嘅研究，咁啊佢文心雕龍嘅研究佢嘅專注都有三本，咁啊係一個年紀誒比較青、比較年青嘅一個學者，咁啊我相信誒跟佢學習咧，佢好多新鮮嘅觀點嘅嚇，我覺得係一個好嘅教授。誒、呃、跟住我哋誒、呃、介紹最後一位教授何長明教授，咁啊何教授咧佢就專門係研究騙文詞庫嘅，咁啊
我哋知道咧，就骈文喺，我相信就係獨一無二噶啦，絕學嚟嘅呢一門係。佢個原因咧就係，誒而家研究骈文基本上喺地球上可以咁講，基本上都冇乜人研究骈文嘅。咁誒誒，何教授咧就做得好深啦，佢嘅研究。咁啊，除此之外咧，佢又誒指導《詩經》《楚辭》，就係關於詞庫呢一方面。啊！佢都可以指導噶啦。咁如果係各位誒有興趣就係誒騙文或者係詞庫嘅，可以報佢嘅研究生。誒、呃、大概我嘅介紹就係咁，另外仲有我啦，唔記得咗我自己。咁啊，我就誒招碩士研究生嘅。咁我自己本身嘅專業咧就係、是、誒出土文獻啦，誒先秦思想啦。咁啊，可以考慮下。咁大概我嘅報告係咁樣啦，啊。咁啊，睇下各位有冇誒問題可以可以提問。好誒，唔該曬 ，Doctor Wong。咁有誒兩個問題都想問翻嘅。咁誒，你啱啱都有講過話嗰個研究計劃係好重要。咁、嗯、究竟誒喺交我個申請或者交我個研究計劃之前，我誒好唔好聯絡一下一啲我誒心儀嘅老師誒，同佢哋商討一下嗰個研究方向咧？其實。你可以聯絡個老師嘅，就係、是、個老師誒，一般佢都會回覆你嘅，啊，俾你指導嘅。呢、这個並並冇任何嘅問題，因為如果你係誒、呃，我哋中文系嘅畢業生，咁樣我哋嘅師生關係其實係非常之密切嘅。基本上你喺校園裏邊一個禮每日你都可能見到個老師，咁呢個應該係一個係一個好正常嘅一個行為。咁啊，但係問題就係嗰個 proposal 你寫得點樣啦？咁呢個都其實我覺得係個關鍵問題啦，係咪取錄啊？好，唔該曬。咁誒，你啱啱誒都有提過啦，樹人係強調呢個跨學科誒嘅研究。咁、嗯、如果誒我作為一個中文系嘅學生想做呢啲跨學科嘅研究，咁你會誒推薦我同誒其他咩 major 即係會有一個誒合作啊？咁樣嗯。其實呢個跨學科呢個研究好好睇你自己個人嘅嗰個喜好，咁啊其實冇限定你跨所跨嘅學科係一啲咩嘅學科，譬如誒、呃、我我知道就係一零一一年二裏邊咧有提到有啲係譬如心理學上邊嘅問題、語言學上邊嘅問題、社會學上邊嘅問題，其實呢啲都係一啲好好嘅角度。譬如好似我我自己講，我自己誒誒、呃呃、一個研究方向就係誒先秦哲學。同就係西方嗰個情感理論呢一種跨學科，咁所以所謂嘅跨學科其實就係非常之寬闊嘅。就總之就兩個唔同嘅領域嘅學科，用一個角度去睇佢，咁當然自然就會有新嘅睇法嘅。Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to the seminars. I'm Agnes uh, from the uh, Department of History. I'm so happy to represent the department and share with all of you about some key issues uh, on the studying of the uh, MPhil and PhD programs. Uh, today, I will be sharing uh, in Cantonese, and so I have uh, uh, prepared some key issues and key points uh, on my PowerPoint slide shows, and uh, all of you can have a look on that. 誒今日我歡迎大家咁啊嚟到我哋嚇，即係誒歷史學系啊，我哋嘅誒一個嘅專題嘅一個分享啦。咁啊會涉及到我哋誒哲學碩士啦，同埋哲學博士嘅一啲課程嘅重點。咁啊今日咧，我哋都好希望嚇，即係將我哋歷史學嘅一啲訓練嘅方向咧，亦都同大家去介紹一下。特別係我喺我哋本科嘅課程當中咧，其實我哋亦都係好著重啦嚇呢個誒專題嘅討論啦，都好著重係一啲中國歷史以至世界史同埋。中國與世界嚇幾個大嘅方向嘅一啲嘅專業訓練，咁呢啲亦都作為我哋喺嚇課程當中係着重理論啦，同埋實踐嘅一個嚇即係雙軌嘅一個嚇訓練嘅課程嘅特點。咁喺呢方面咧，咁啊，我哋喺啊哲學碩士同埋哲學博士當中咧，其實亦都係好希望咧，可以幫助同學啦，係又特別係有意去進行一啲專門嘅一啲歷史學研究嘅一啲嚇，即係同學去幫佢咧發掘佢哋嘅研究嘅興趣同埋能力，特。別係就住一啲咧創新嘅研究方向咧，亦都可以提供咧一定嘅一啲係指導嘅工作。咁喺呢方面咧，我哋亦都
係我希望下，即、就、係、是、我哋同學能夠下，即、就、係、是、了解咗我哋基本嘅一啲下課程嘅特徵啦。咁亦都係下，即係計劃下你哋報讀嘅時候嘅一啲下，即係具體嘅情況。咁特別首先我要介紹呢，就係我哋本身即係我哋嗰個誒專業嘅一個即係領領域嘅一個嘅訓練嘅團隊咁我哋本身亦都大家亦都相信喺頭先嘅兩節嘅討論當中，會特別清楚了解導師同埋學生之間嘅關係呢係一個好非常密切嘅一個嘅誒學習嘅過程。咁特別喺研究嘅課程當中，咁所以呢，我哋學係亦都有一班嘅即係資深嘅專業嘅誒導師啦，亦都會配合喺呢方面嚇同學嘅發展。繼而咧，係提供一啲咧指導嘅工作。咁另外啦，亦都係咧，我哋會喺誒我哋嘅誒個別嘅指導嘅方向當中咧，會用一下單對單嘅一個形式咧，特別去進行呢一個嘅誒研究嘅課程。咁就無論你係碩士研究嘅課程，或者係呢一個博士研究課程咧，喺呢方面亦都可以獲得具體嘅指導。呢、这、一個亦都係我哋相信係較為靈活嘅一種嘅方式，可以協助同學喺學習嘅過程當中咧，去實踐。下你哋嘅研究嘅導向啦，同埋以後踏入到去呢一個歷史學嘅專業訓練當中。咁啊，再進一步咧，我哋其實喺個課程當中咧，嚇亦都配合歷史係一貫，我哋咧籌辦好多相關嘅啲學術活動啦、誒研討會啦，包括我哋主辦或者參與一啲國際研討會啦，以至嚇不定期嘅一啲嚇學術活動等等。咁呢個亦都係有幫助咧，我哋嘅研究生去進行一啲參與籌劃嘅工作啦，甚至乎咧係特別鼓勵大家咧去實際上去參與進行一啲學術報告嘅。咁喺呢個過程當中咧，其實亦都有。能夠提供咗好多嘅機會俾大家咧去實踐嚇，咁所以呢個亦都係啦。喺你知識上面嘅增長，喺你分析能力增長當中咧，其實亦都係要對外去發表啊你研究嘅一啲嚇成果或者部分嘅成果。咁喺呢方面咧，歷史係亦都可以提供一啲好具體嘅機會嘅。咁整體而言呢，其實我哋下即係都會為我哋被採錄嘅學生啦提供一啲呢，你哋能夠發揮同埋發展你自己嚇創造性嘅一啲歷史議題嘅一啲嘅導向，亦都好希望喺呢度呢，能夠度身。訂造啊，好似嚇，即係為每一位嚇我哋嘅研究生咧，去安排你哋嘅成長啦。特別喺你嘅研究過程當中咧，係即係要注意嘅地方咧。咁導師亦都會提供下適當嘅意見。咁呢個亦都係啦嚇課程一個好重要、好重要嘅關鍵因素。咁喺我哋嘅誒歷史學嘅研究嘅碩士同埋博士嘅研究課程當中咧，其實我哋亦都會嚇即係具體去提供一啲咧嚇關於誒中國文化啦，以至喺中國歷史同埋相。關一啲歷史討論嘅一啲嚇專題嘅誒計劃嘅導向同埋培訓，亦都咧同一時間咧係會嚇喺一個嚇即係近代中國一個歷史文化嘅建構底下進行一啲咧嚇架構上邊嘅分析。當然呢個亦都會就住喺我哋嘅專業嘅歷史學當中去不斷去發展，以至喺對外嘅文化同埋一啲嚇涉及到文化以至係啊經濟方面等等嘅社會面貌嘅討論咧，其實呢個亦都會涉及喺我哋嘅課程當中。咁啊更加具體啦，整體性。我哋其實亦都可以更加全面去了解我哋喺香港歷史當中，以至喺具體嘅文化或者係一啲經濟嘅面貌當中咧，去實踐我哋一啲嘅討論。咁呢個亦都係提供更多嘅方向俾我哋咧嚇。除咗係歷史專業知識以外咧，其實我哋面向社會達至到應用方向咧，其實亦都係一個好重要嘅關鍵因素。咁喺我哋個課程當中咧嚇，咁亦都有一啲咧嚇，即係特別嘅要求。咁啊，又好似頭先啊老師提出嘅一啲嚇重點嘅 tips 啊，俾大家。咁當然啦嚇，一啲相關學位嘅基本嘅知識同埋訓練，係啲同學亦都係好需要嘅。咁呢個咧，除咗係歷史學以外咧，其實亦都有好多唔同嘅一啲本科嘅學生啦，包括喺文化同埋相關嘅學科當中咧，其實對佢哋啊，對於佢哋嚟講咧，係進修一個嘅歷史專業嘅研究。課程嚟講咧，其實亦都係一個很好好嘅發展。咁另外啦，亦都有啲基本嘅中國歷史嘅訓練啦。我相信呢個亦都係一個即係最基本嘅要求。咁達至到呢啲基本要求要求咧，同學亦都可以考慮去報讀我哋嘅課程。
。咁啊，另外一個同學亦都相信好關心嘅就係誒師資嚇埋嗰個架構嘅情況。咁而喺我哋嚇歷史專業當中咧，以下我就會介紹幾位嚇我哋咧喺學係一啲資深同埋年青嘅嚇即係學者嘅組成嘅一啲隊伍。咁啊，希望咧大家有所了解，亦都係對咧每一位教授嘅專長啦，同埋佢哋研究嘅興趣以至喺出版方面咧，大家都會咧。啊，有一啲若干嘅認識。咁第一位咧就係我哋歷史學系嘅系主任魏彩虹教授。咁佢專門嘅研究方向咧就會集中喺中國歷史啦、啊亞洲歷史同埋外交關係，以至咧呢個咧美國嘅歷史同埋美國嘅外交政策等等嚇。咁啊旁邊我亦都咧係提出咗一啲書影咧，大家可以作為參考嘅。第二位教授咧就係莫世祥教授，咁佢嘅專長咧就會集中喺咧近代中國同埋當代中國嘅歷史，以至咧個中國啦、誒台灣啦、香港同埋誒誒澳門嘅歷史專業當中，咁啊亦都係住在等身嘅。咁啊，羅永生博士，咁佢比較集中咧喺古代中國嘅歷史啦，嚇中古中國嘅歷史啦，以至咧喺呢一個嚇中國嘅政治制度啦，以至咧中外文化交流嘅歷史，亦都咧嚇近年咧專注喺呢一個咧絲綢之路嘅研究當中。咁啊，歐志堅博士咧，咁啊，佢嘅專長咧就會集中嚇喺呢個咧近代中國嘅學術思想史，同埋咧香港以至喺誒一九四九年之後嘅歷史發展當中。咁啊，周志峰博士咧，咁佢嘅專長咧，亦都會喺呢個嚇誒近代中國咧，以至呢個城市史嘅研究啦，亦都包括咧香港嘅歷史同埋中國嘅經濟史。而我自己本人咧，亦都係即係專於喺呢一個咧中國近代嘅基督教歷史啦、中國近代史啦、香港史同埋咧現代亞洲以至咧世界史嘅研究。咁啊，大家亦都可以多參考，亦都可以就住嚇一誒一啲誒你哋有興趣或者心儀去報讀嘅課程當中，去設計嘅一啲啊誒 proposal 係咪呢啲嘅研究計劃？咁啊，就住唔同嘅我哋啊團隊嘅唔同嘅專業嘅一啲嘅領域嚇去了解清楚，咁大家咧亦都可以就住呢個情況去計劃去報讀我哋嘅課程。咁啊，最後啦，我亦都咧想介紹一下，咁除咗今日嚇簡短嘅一個時間，可以同大家去分享有關一啲我哋嚇研究課程嘅重點以外咧，大家同學亦都咧可以不時咧上我哋歷史係新嘅學系網站咧去獲得更多嘅資訊嘅。咁當中有好多會涉及我哋一啲學術活動嘅一啲嘅資料啦。咁大家亦都可以咧嚇即按住情況去自由參與。咁同時之間啦，咁又涉及到研究嘅課程啦，包括呢個碩士研究同埋博士研究嘅課程。咁咧學術活動對我哋嚟講咧係非常之重要嘅。咁呢個亦都係我哋好鼓勵同學喺在學期間以至喺嚇修讀研究課程期間咧，亦都係要重點去多參與，以擴闊你嘅視野。同一時間咧，要達至到一個跨學科嘅一個誒領域上邊嘅一個嘅發展咧，其實誒歷史學咧，其實好多時候都可以嚇。即係做到啊，好多元化嘅一個嘅思考嘅一個模式，特別咧好多領域亦都會涉及到佢本身歷史嘅發展啦，亦都係相關嘅啲嚇，即係跨學科嘅研究當中咧，其實亦都有好多時候會涉及到一啲歷史嘅訓練。咁所以學術活動方面咧，其實我哋都舉辦咗好多元化，包括一啲啊研討會啦，一啲學術講座啦。咁當中大家都會見到啦，海外嘅學者嘅參與同我哋同開，以至老師嘅交流，甚至乎咧喺本土我哋其實都可以。可以發掘好多多元文化嘅一啲啊歷史好悠久嘅一啲發展，咁呢啲我哋都好鼓勵同學嚇同埋相關嘅學者，以至咧社會嘅領袖咧係互相去接觸。咁啊當中咧近呢幾年我哋亦都係特別咧嚇邀請啊一啲啊領事咧嚟到我哋課堂當中同同學分享。咁呢一位咧就係啊就係早兩年我哋邀請嚇即係伊朗嘅領事，咁佢本身就亦都係一個誒教學者，咁所以咧佢同我哋同學嗰個交流咧係非常之活躍嘅，而大家。喺圖片喺相片當中，亦都會見到嚇同學嗰個喺準備之後嘅一個情況咧。咁佢哋嘅提問咧，亦都係非常活躍嚇。咁所以呢個完全冇語言隔隔膜嘅嚇，咁啊非常好嘅一啲嘅活動。咁當然啦，喺我哋香港本身嚟講，去進行研究嘅課程咧，其實亦都係相當之誒誒重要嘅。咁亦都係好多時候帶俾我哋一啲好多嘅學術上邊接觸嘅一啲嚇，即係接軌嘅方便啦。咁所以咧，亦都好多時候不定。期嘅一啲誒海外嘅學者啊，或者學生啊，會嚟到我哋學樹人歷史系咧，去進行一啲交流。呢、這、一個方面咧，亦都係同學會有好多嘅機會去接觸唔同
嘅文化，以至咧去達至到下一種多元文化嘅一種交流。咁啊，海外嘅一啲考察嘅活動啦，我哋師生之間嘅一啲啊，發掘一啲嚇重要嘅方向啦。咁我哋今日在座亦都有啲歷史系嘅同學有參與我哋呢個課程嘅講座。喂，當中佢哋都有參與到嚇，我哋咧就二零一九年嚇喺疫情之前嚇，我哋咧就兩位老師嚇，包括我在內就同同學去咗南京嚇去誒行走好多嚇，即係博物館啦，發掘好多誒古代嘅歷史，以至我哋嚇好重要嘅當代嘅民國歷史嘅一啲嘅討論，甚至乎同學去到圖書館，去到一啲檔案館專門嚇去接觸，以至咧係俾佢哋初嘗試去了解嚇，即係歷史檔案，以至咧係點樣去發掘一啲歷史檔案嘅啲嘅過程。咁呢個係一個非常難得嘅一個經驗，同埋一個誒係我哋希望好希望可以繼續延續呢一種嚇誒。本科以至咧係延伸去到咧研究課程當中嚇，幫助同學發展嘅一個專業嘅訓練。咁啊，本土嘅歷史亦都非常多，大家同佢都應該相信會知道嚇，即係超過百年嘅古蹟歷史，香港咧就越嚟越熱門㗎啦呢啲議題。咁啊，其實喺老師包括我在內咧，一直都好關心一啲咧我哋嚇香港嘅本土嘅一啲嚇非文化誒遺產啦，以至文化遺產嘅發展。咁最近我哋都喺一啲 G E c o 當中咧開放一啲咧新嘅課程去進行討論，但係呢一個情況始終咧嚇，如果可以去到誒研究院當中去陸續去發展咧，我相信對於同學嚟講咧，呢個發展機會係非常之大。咁啊，同學亦都可以咧重點去考慮。咁啊，本土嘅文化啦，以至嚇宗教嘅實踐啦，咁啊好多咧，我哋不定期亦都有一啲嘅啊，同同學即係去即係進行一啲參觀，同埋咧去揾一啲專家學者去進行一啲分享。温到最後啦，喺網站咧有一個。新增嘅地方咧，大家可能會非常之感興趣，就係、是、一個學生同埋畢業生嘅分享。大家可能會好關心，究竟嚇學生嘅出路係點咧？以往係咪喺誒早年嘅時候，我哋樹人未開辦呢個研究課程嘅時候，我哋同學未必有興趣去進行一啲啊，即係修讀研究嘅一啲嚇，即係進一步嘅發展咧。其實唔係嘅。咁喺上邊咧，我哋有好多好成功嘅例子啦，亦都係好鼓舞嘅例子嚇。同學去到各大嘅院校咧，去進行進修啊，包。包括呢個碩士、誒哲學碩士以至咧博士嘅課程，咁大家亦都有興趣咧，可以詳細去到我哋嘅網站咧，可以咧即係瞭解到我哋嘅分享同埋一啲咧具體嘅個案。咁啊，呢個亦都希望可以幫到大家去進一步瞭解下歷史係嘅嚇哲學誒碩士課程同埋咧哲學博士課程嘅一啲嘅相關嘅元素同埋一啲嘅重點。咁啊，到最後咁啊，希望大家如果有興趣報讀誒歷史係嘅課程嘅時候咧，亦都歡迎大家去聯絡我哋啦，或者聯絡我哋下個。別個老師啊，即係作一個即係誒具體嘅一啲學術嘅交流。我相信我哋每一位老師咧，亦都好歡迎大家，亦都好希望咧係可以進住我哋本身嘅專業嘅知識同埋我哋個個嘅資歷咧，亦都可以提供俾大家一啲特定嘅一啲指導嘅方向。好，咁今日嘅介紹就到呢度，唔該曬。好，好唔該曬 ，Dr. Pan。誒、呃，首先誒、呃、後邊兩位同學會唔會有啲問題想問下？咁啊，頭先咧，因為我聽嗰個介紹咧，都知道每個嘅研究生啦，都要讀兩個嘅一個嘅必修嘅課程，同埋有一個咧係 departmental elective 嚟嘅。咁我想問問，其實嗰一個 departmental elective 咧，其實係實際上一個乜嘢嘅課程嚟嘅咧？即係會關於啲乜嘢嘅課程？嗯，好。咁咧呢個都有準備到嘅嚇，因為咧呢一個係。誒、uh, HIST 六零一嘅課程係啦，咁呢個係屬於一個 Guide Readings in Historical Studies 嘅，嚇咁啊係由誒你嘅 supervisor 啦，或者當其時睇下誒我哋修讀誒碩士或者博士嘅人數多寡啦，咁或者會由我哋係主任去任教，咁啊個過程當中咧其實就會啊即係羅列咗一定嘅一啲嚇即係相關一啲誒歷史誒研究嘅一啲嘅書目名單俾同學去進行參考，咁即係喺呢一個嘅。課程當中咧，其實同學咧就必須要有誒具體嘅實際嘅參與啦。咁亦都係會同你嘅 supervisor， 即係你指導嘅老師咧，去啊瞭解你嗰個具體嘅研究嘅情況，究竟咧應該羅列誒啲乜嘢嘅書單嚇去進行一啲初步嘅參考。亦都係為咗咧係去準備嚇你嗰個啊，即係誒一年之後嚇大概嗰個時間之後咧，係準備一啲嘅研究嘅報告嘅時候咧，去進行一啲充分嘅準備。咁所以過程嚟講咧。
，咁亦都係即係就住每位同學你嘅研究嘅發展咧，而去即係有所調整。所以呢個都係我頭先開始嘅強開始嘅時候比較強調，就係、是、我哋希望利用咗一個係單對單一個比較靈活嘅一個嘅方式去協助同學去進行呢一次嘅即係修讀研究課程嘅一個即係整個嘅訓練同埋過程。係啦，咁所以呢個亦都係會如果我係啊啊頭先係我哋四年班歷史系嘅同學嘅提問啦，咁一般嘅情況你哋都應該相當了解，係。唔該曬 ，Doctor Pan。咁有啲同學就誒、呃、想知道，因為你啱啱都講過歷史係會有好多 conference 啊，會咁樣。咁講到呢啲會議咧，歷史係會唔會有啲誒、呃、常規嘅中國或者國際嘅會議會誒俾啲同學參加咧？又或者如果誒、呃、我參加呢啲會議嘅話咧，咁歷史係會唔會有啲咩資助我俾我哋嘅？嗯、其實一般情況咧，我哋頭先誒，我哋、啊啊啊、School of Director 都介紹過啦嚇，咁啊同學如果修讀誒、呃、碩士研究課程或者博士研究課程咧，其實嚇即係如果成功修讀啦嚇，咁、啊、你會有 studentship 嘅，咁所以一般情況其實你個 studentship 咧，亦都可以作為安排嚇、啊，就係除咗學費以外嘅一啲係交流嘅活動啦，或者甚至乎咧、呃、我哋有喺、呃、學系入面有討論過咧，就係、是呃、我哋老師亦都有好多唔少嘅一啲、呃研究嘅一啲嚇計劃咧，能夠成功申請咧，亦都有機會嚇，即係誒，我哋嘅學生會有機會咧，會做一啲合作嘅，係啊，咁去幫助。咁所以過程之中可能會有機會有啲咁嘅安排。咁啊，其餘就係頭先提到誒嗰個提問，就係會涉及到我哋誒。以往嚇喺疫情前啦嚇，或者唔係疫情影響底下，誒一直以嚟我哋辦嘅一啲嚇，即係本地或者國際嘅研討會。咁其實咧，我哋都好多同學有有參與，係啊。咁所以我哋要透過唔同嘅渠道啦嚇，亦都同學喺參與嘅過程當中咧，其實唔單單只係係一個參與者咯，係啦。喺同一時間可能亦都會係嚇，即係一啲 student helper， 一啲誒已經係投入咗落去啊喺嗰個啊籌備嘅過程當中咧，去吸收佢哋嘅經驗。我甚至乎咧，我哋可能安排講者嘅誒每日嘅行程啊，亦都有一啲同學，如果佢有具體嘅一啲誒熱誠啦，又包括佢哋嘅能力啦，咁啊老師亦都係即係好無私可以訓練佢哋咧去進行一啲咧學術嘅交流。咁所以我哋亦都有啲在學嘅同學，其實早兩年咧係參加過同我哋師生一齊咧去合作去進行一啲喺歷史博物館嘅一啲報告嘅學術報告。咁所以呢啲方面咧，其實誒機會係非常之多。咁亦都係我哋好。想去提供俾同學，誒、呃，亦都特別係即係有興趣，係有至於喺研究方向繼續去發展佢嗰個歷史專業嘅同學咧，多一啲嘅渠道去接觸下，或者早一啲接觸佢哋具體嘅一啲嘅情況，咁啊，以致佢哋可以好好計劃喺喺佢哋修讀嘅哲學碩士同埋哲學博士嘅課程之間咧，可以協調得更加好嘅。好唔該曬 ，Doctor Pan， 仲有仲有一個問題啊！咁有啲同學想問出路嘅問題。咁、嗯、我讀完歷史系嘅 M Phil PhD 之後咧，咁、嗯、誒、呃、我之後會唔會誒、呃、有機會可能去內地啊、國外繼續深造或者讀一啲 post doc 誒、呃、誒、呃、degree 咧？咁會唔會有啲誒畢業生嘅數據可以分享一下？嗯，咁啊，暫時咧，我哋誒因為都係最近呢幾年啦，我哋開辦呢個哲學同埋碩士嘅研究誒同埋博士嘅課程。咁我哋咧而家暫時咧就有一位嘅嚇，即係 part time 嘅研究生係可以修讀緊一個博士嘅課程嘅。咁啊誒，應該咧係安排咗喺聽日咧，佢會有一個專題嘅講座，係會同我哋即係分享。咁啊喺誒以往嘅經驗啦，除咗呢一位學生之外咧，其實喺香港去修讀誒。呢、这個嘅 M.P. 或者 P.H.D. 嘅 program 咧，其實我哋嗰個交流機會都好多，咁亦都有唔少嘅例子咧。其實喺嗰個計劃嘅安排當中啦，如果同學有意喺海外或者喺國內去進行修讀一啲博士後嘅課程咧，我相信呢個機會亦都非常之多嚇。所以呢個要視乎同學嘅能力啦，同埋佢本身嗰個學習專題嚇研究嘅專題嗰個發展嘅方向。咁呢方面咧，其實亦都係可以就住本身嗰個專題咧。係慢慢去計劃嘅，咁呢個亦都係好鼓勵同學咧，可以多去參與下呢啲嘅過程，去吸收你嘅研究嘅經驗，同埋多發表你研究嘅成果。係。Hey, good afternoon. My name is Peter Story. Thank you for attending this、uh, workshop or the seminar on、uh, postgraduate study in. Hong Kong Xi'an University.、Uh, first of all, I'd like to say、uh, how impressed I've been by 
what I've seen so far from Professor Tang and also from Dr. Pang, very hard act to follow, okay? A very uh, inspiring and passionate presentation on MPhil and PhD in history. In fact, I'm persuaded I would like to change my discipline and study a PhD in history myself. Sounds very, very interesting. My own experience of PhD was very, very different from that in Shuyan University. In fact, I did uh, my master's in applied linguistics after having taught for about 10 or 15 years. And I never thought about doing a doctoral, dis doctoral degree at all. Uh, I, I, got, I did well in the masters. And then my, my, one of the supervisors for my kind of project suggested that I do a PhD in his area. And I was, you know, uh, I was attached to, to that guy and I liked his, liked his lectures. And so I kind of drifted into a doctoral into a doctoral study on a part-time basis. And then my contact with that university more or less stopped. No support whatsoever. In fact, my supervisor was even sent away to another university in a totally different city, a different, different continent. And I wasn't even informed about it. So I was just left by myself without any kind of support. But in Shuyan, you, do, you really get a, an amazingly supportive uh, doctoral or MPhil experience. So what about the MPhil PhD in English? Well, uh, the English degree, our undergraduate program, is an inter interdisciplinary program. And so the advantage of studying English for your, for your MPhil or PhD is that English is already an interdisciplinary study. And in our program, uh, in our staff profile, we emphasize the interdisciplinary aspect of language studies. So the degree program itself and the department itself is divided into four streams, linguistics, literature, cultural studies, and translation. So um, we have experts within the department in these four strands, all related to language, but all also having an interdisciplinary nature in their, in their specialisms. So within literature, you can study all sorts of areas related to, for example, the classical literature of Shakespeare, or areas like literature and architecture, literature and music, literature and visual culture, which are already making links between two disciplines. So they're already disciplinary, interdisciplinary. Within, within linguistics, there are already interdisciplinary linguistic studies, like sociolinguistics makes a link between sociology and linguistics. Psycholinguistics makes a link between uh, language and psychology. Second language acquisition looks at uh, uh, psychological aspects of language learning as well. So there are a number of very interesting interdisciplinary strands within the program already. Now, when you're thinking about embarking on a MPhil or PhD program as a fresh graduate or a graduate from a master's degree, as Professor Tang has pointed out, there are a number of expectations. Of course, we encourage you to apply if you have, if you meet these expectations, if you're passionate enough, if you're motivated enough to succeed in your studies. But look at the expectations and think carefully first, okay? For an MPhil, you have to develop advanced knowledge of a defined field and an understanding of interrelationships between it and associated fields and disciplines. For a PhD, demonstrate a deep and holistic understanding of their own field and at the interface between it and associated fields and disciplines. 
So it's a very demanding commitment that you are undertaking when you uh, register or enroll for a MPhil or a PhD program. And not only that, it's a time commitment. It could be up to eight years, okay, which is amazing, right? So, um, of course, no, I, I hope that not many people would take 96 months to complete their PhD, but it is a possibility. And it's another aspect of the support which the university provides. And so the expectations are quite demanding, okay? You, have, you really have to have commitment, passion, motivation, determination, and a strong desire for some reason to get a doctorate or to get an MPhil. It could be that you are just fascinated with language, the way language works, and you want to do research at the cutting edge of language and, uh, and another disciplinary area. It could be that you have a strong desire to create new knowledge in the area of language and another area. Uh, those things are kind of prerequisites, I would say, for success. If you're just doing it because you think it will give you a better career option, that probably is not strong enough motivation. You have to have the passion, you have to have the strong desire, rather than a kind of vocational reason, but some kind of inherent fascination with the area of knowledge that you're going to explore. So if you have those, uh, if you have those prerequisites, then you can think about an area of study and you can approach one of our staff and talk through your ideas. Now, the good thing about our department is that we have uh, very helpful, very kind, very supportive staff members who are passionate about their areas of study. And if you have an interest in that area, then they will support you in fleshing out your ideas and developing your proposal. So first thing to do is to identify the area that you're really interested in and look for a supervisor who can help you to firm up your very preliminary ideas, okay? So here are, here's a list of our staff members who are currently PhD or, P or MPhil supervisors. First of all, Professor Wong, uh, a specialist in cultural studies uh, and also interdisciplinarity. Um, also somebody with a strong interest in ecology and environmental science, okay? So uh, Professor Wong would support you in those areas. Uh, then there's myself. I'm more of a language person. My PhD was in language testing and my work has been in language program evaluation. But currently I'm very interested in corpus studies and digital humanities. So corpus-based data-driven learning, corpus linguistics. These are areas which I would encourage students to explore because they are very in demand areas at the moment and they, they match the university's priorities and, st and strategic plan. Dr. Amy Chan, uh, like Professor Wong, is a, an expert in the field of cultural studies. Uh, she's the program leader of the Master in Intercultural, Interdisciplinary Cultural Studies. And she's also a specialist in gender studies and feminism. Um, Professor Dr. Bale, a Shakespearean scholar, Rebecca Bale. Uh, Dr. Lian Mi Yi Man, she did her doctoral dissertation uh, in, in the area of environmental ethics and culture and eco-criticism. She's a cultural studies specialist. Then we have Dr. Sherman Lee, a linguist with a specialism in discourse analysis, language contact, multilingualism, sociolinguistics, language variation, English for academic purposes. 
Dr. Casey Liu, translation specialist, also working in the field of gender studies, uh, gender-based translation studies, very, very interesting aspects and applications of translation to gender. Dr. Stephen Venninger, a literary specialist, working in the field of literature and architecture, literature and music, literature and visual culture. And then Dr. Josephine Yam, second language acquisition, phonetics and phonology, sociolinguistics. So a whole range of different disciplines for you to explore if you have the passion and the interest and the determination to get a doctoral degree in, the, in one of these language related, linguistics related, translation related or cultural studies related areas. So uh, thank you very much. That's uh, my presentation. See if you have any questions. Thank you, Professor Story. Um, so if I don't have a related English degree, but I'm quite interested in a particular topic in your program. So um, is there any chance for me to apply for your program in Xi'an University? Uh, definitely you can apply for the program, but you would have to, de you would have to demonstrate that you have some kind of essential foundation in language study, language awareness, uh, and some, some background, okay? Really, you can't really start from scratch at this level. You have to come, in, come into the field with, with some, something related in your undergraduate study or in your master's study. Okay, thank you, Professor Story. One more question. Uh, so as I know, Xu Yan uh, own, uh, also provide a top master's program in English, uh, which is Master of Arts in Interdisc Interdisciplinary Cultural Studies. So um, is there any difference between this top master's program and the MPhil program? Um, well, yeah, a big difference because the master's in inter interdisciplinary cultural studies is a taught master's degree. Uh, it, I mean, it has a dissertation at the end, but basically it's a taught program in a specialized area of cultural studies, interdisciplinary cultural studies, whereas the MPhil is a research degree. You, you have to have a proposal, you have, to, you have to identify your own research area. There are some taught components of the MPhil, but probably more than 60% uh, of it is your own independent research supported by your supervisor. Okay, so uh, my name is Cynthia and I'm a PhD student from the English department. And should I start with my research interest? My research interest is uh, ecological studies, gender studies, panel science, Delusian studies, and popular culture. And my working thesis is about uh, bridging the queer ecologies and ecofeminisms. Uh, I was told to talk about the application procedures, uh, so I will share my experience with you. So uh, for the applications, please think about what you are interested in and what you want to write, and then see if any of the professors share the same or similar research interests. And if you can, try to email them and describe your proposal briefly and ask for their advice. Usually the <laughs> teachers here is very friendly, so they will give you some comments to modify your and how to work on your proposal. And then you start working on your proposal. And my, work, my proposal was about like 4,000 words, including the background, the proposed thesis, and argument, and literature review, brief outlines of the dissertation proposed, and then the research methodologies, bibliography, and a preliminary reading list. It took me about like a month. I majored in English, so I didn't have to submit my IELTS uh, report, but if you were not from the English department, so you probably have to spend like a month to prepare for the IELTS exam. 
I submitted the, my uh, application form and then with my proposal, the transcripts of my previous studies, uh, graduation certificate, and a writing example and two recommendation letters from uh, academic referees. And then you just have to wait for the interview. I was interviewed by four teachers from my department. So that was terrifying. So be prepared. As for the thoughts about the supervision and classes, uh, the classes like Professor Tan has said, uh, it's mostly interdisciplinary. We need to take uh, two classes with students from other departments. So it's very interesting to mingle with the other students as the discussions always give sparks to new ideas. You can see things from a different perspective that you have never thought of. And this is something you can't really do in other institutions. I also had a departmental courses that was uh, guide readings and in which I was required to read 15 books, both literary texts and theoretical publications. So as for the supervisions, and this is actually why I study PhD in SYU because after my bachelor degree, I actually continued my study in CUHK for my Master of Arts degree and also my MP degree. So while the facilities there were uh, exceptional and that, uh, that the teaching quality was not as good, let's say, uh, but that's my experience, so I can only speak for myself, but uh, my supervisor there was not the best match with me. And sometimes she just didn't guide me to the right directions. And even when she points me to a direction, it was the wrong directions. But in SYU, in Xi'an, because I've already known the teacher since I was doing the bachelor degree here, I, they were familiar with me and they know how to push me to do better. And here, my supervisor usually can give me the support I need. And, uh, and usually, because when you do the postgraduate studies, it's very common that you have lost some confidence during the progress. So uh, it's important to have a supervisor that is supportive to you. Uh, as for the workload, the first year was rather intense because uh, Professor Tan also said that we have to take two courses in the first year. I have to take three courses in a voluntary reading group. So that was like two term papers and then 15 book reports. I also had to hold a workshop as required in the PhD study. Um, the second year was slightly better, but due to the pandemic, uh, things were slowing down and because the library and the campus were closed. But uh, I still managed to hold my second workshops and my proposal defense. And during the last two years, I also presented in two conferences, and, but they are not exactly workable because they are not compulsory, but you are encouraged to do so. Uh, besides my schoolwork, I also have to work as TA as I receive studentship monthly. In some other cases, uh, my classmates have to work as LA. So every week we have to spend actually no more than 12 hours for the uh, school uh, for the TA and LA job. And I usually was the, I usually have to be the TA for one or two courses every semester. And sometimes I have to help with the academic conferences that my department is holding. The workload isn't that heavy, but you have to have very good time management or else you don't have time to do your own work. Uh, you may want to know the, about the whole life. I stayed, at, uh, I lived in the dorm for two years. It was pretty good. It, the room was very spacious and it was facing the sea wheel and you have your own bathroom, so you don't have to share with other classmates or other dormates. And before the COVID, I, my other two postgraduate friends, they live next to me. And sometimes we just hang out together. 
uh, we like sometimes we just go to hiking at Bay Mar Hill, and then sometimes we just try new foods in Causeway Bay, etc. And it's nice to have someone very close to you to share your ambitions and talk about your future together. So it can help to boost your motivation and know that you are not alone in the role of research. And then last but not least is the school with support. And Shuyen has been being very supportive to our, uh, to our fellow PhD and MPhil students that uh, there is a graduate, stu a graduate studies committee that meets us annually and they don't really brush away our requests. So we feel respected and know that the school is doing their best to accommodate our uh, requirements. So the staff is also very friendly. So that's a very nice experience to study here overall. So if you have any questions, you can feel free to ask me. Okay, welcome back. Okay. Uh, I would like to, you know, kind of thanks to both uh, uh, speakers, our faculty and students sharing about the specifics of the program, and particularly to Cynthia sharing her experience at Xi'an. And I would like to do a quick summary and then see if any you, you have any clarifications or you need further information from me. So for one thing, I'd like to clarify that the hours of the studentship, okay, is an average of 12 hours. So sometimes, you know, it might, in some ways you might work more than that, or you might work less than that. It's an averaging out. And in the summers, you pay 12 months, okay? And in the summer months, there's no school, you probably will be doing research work. And in the semesters, when there's teaching, when it's same time, you might need to work more than 12 hours. So it's an average time, okay? And um, so that, that, and there's no penalty system. <laughs> in some university, there's some, if they're not perform, performing well, uh, the, the studentship will be you know, taken away or reduced. But here, a peasant, all the students are very conscientious, they're performing well, fulfilling their duties. So there's no incidence of reducing the, the support. The studentship. So um, that's all I need to summarize. And if there are any questions that I need to clarify. Yes, uh, you mentioned the graduate seminars and research seminar in the introduction. So uh, the students need to attend a number of seminars during their study period. So what are the possible topics or the domains of these uh, graduate seminars or research seminars? Okay, graduate seminars, there are three aspects to it. Okay, we offer a variety of graduate seminars that the students take. Okay, one group is referring to self-personal you know, development, like time management, work family balance, and stress, and how to deal with uh, you know, interpersonal relationship. That's one group. Another group is on uh, research, okay, like research ethics, and how to present, you know, present uh, your findings or how to do a good presentation. Another group is on writing, okay, uh, and, and teaching, okay, as a TA, how to use all those teaching aids and to be familiarized with all the technological things in presenting and in your teaching. So it's this uh, one hour long, and it's pretty interesting. And you have also have this, you know, it varies. For some semesters, you have the choice, and for some semesters, you might just take the compulsory ones. Okay. And for the research seminar, it depends on who we can invite in that particular academic year. But as I said, our program uniqueness is interdisciplinary. So you might hear something basic. I think one of the requirements of the research seminar per, 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 per year is that. That seminar has to be a research seminar, okay? Has to be outside your discipline. For example, if you're coming from history, you will have to attend a research seminar by some, some uh, faculties or some speakers from outside history department. History department. And it's one hour long. 
but you only need to attend one. Okay. And if students going to conferences either locally or internationally, that will probably will come to work. Okay. So I won't give too, too I won't be too worried about that. Thank you so much, Professor Tan. So um, this is the end of our uh, seminar today. Yes. Yeah. Thanks for all. For thanks for coming. Okay. And hope to receiving your application early. <laughs>